Time for a spiritual awakening. Time for a spiritual awakening. Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is Spiritual Awakening 101, uh, and I'm your host. My name is Reverend Jerry Yaakov, and we'll be reading today from a little booklet entitled Choose Once Again. And these are selections from A Course in Miracles. Today we'll be reading on our identity, our true identity in Christ and in God. And this reading, uh, while it's short, uh, is very deep, very powerful, extremely poetic. I'm really struck by the poetry and the beauty of the writing. It was dictated by Jesus to a woman named Helen in the 1960s. And she took it down. She describes it as her inner scribe. So it was truly divinely inspired. Just as an aside, I think that we all have that, of course, inner scribe within us, that divinity in our minds. And when we've swept away all of that which is unlike God and love, unlike guiltlessness and sinlessness, true innocence, a true nature, when all of the blocks have been swept aside, we too can listen and hear the divine inspiration and guidance. All of it is, of course, within our minds. Our minds involve God itself as a creation of God. It's also known as the soul. Our soul knows our soul is complete and whole. Our soul is our true identity, not this body, not this world, but the soul, the Christ mind, it travels at infinite speed and is in all places and is in all things and knows all things and is completely understanding and completely loving. Well, let's get started with the reading and uh, we'll do some comments along the way. You are as God created you. Today, honor your true self. Let graven images you made to be the son of God instead of what he is, he worshiped not today. Deep in your mind, the Holy Christ in you is waiting your acknowledgement as you. And you are lost and do not know yourself while he is, a, is unacknowledged and unknown. So we remain as God created us forever and eternally, but not as a separate identity, a personality, a body. I identify myself in the world as Jerry Yaakov. But really, that is not my true identity. The world is not truly my home. Yes, I experience being in the world. But as we know, we're not of this world. We're of a heavenly source. And that which is created as a heavenly source, never leaves its source, never leaves its origin. We're still in heaven. Yes, we've fallen asleep and we're dreaming of an exile in a body and in a world, but that isn't true. So there are lessons that we can learn while we're dreaming this dream of a body and a world and of sin and guilt and separation from God and from each other. As it says here, uh, 
I am as God created me. Today I honor my true self. And all the graven images that I've made as the Son of God, instead of what I really am and worship those, I won't worship them anymore. I'll recognize that I've taken on a dreamlike figure, a projection of sinful, fearful thoughts. But those thoughts can be erased. Those, those thoughts can be undone. And how they're undone, of course, we'll get into as this episode proceeds. But once we really awaken from the dream of the false ego self as a body, who quite naturally has God created us forever, ideas leave not their source. <clears throat> if you remain as God created you, appearances cannot replace the truth. Health cannot turn to sickness, nor can death be substitute for life or fear for love. All this has not occurred if you remain as God created you. You need no thought but just this one, to let redemption come to light the world and free it from the, fat, the past. Excuse me. So if we remain as God created us, and I am as God created me, you are as God created you. That is an eternal creation in the likeness and image of God and ideas never leave their source. So we are, as I like to describe it, as the Christ. The Christ is God's creation. And that is all that God has created. It's everywhere, it's everything. It's perfect love. It is the lion laying down with the lamb. So we are that lion lying down with the lamb in perfect peace. We are the lamb. We are the Christ. God is the Father. God is the source of the idea of Christ, that which we are. And, and of course, as the Christ, we're never sick. We have perfect identity and health. And uh, we never die because we're created as an infinite being in the likeness and image of God itself. This extension as the Christ from God's mind is never really born. It's a creation. And that's where we get the idea of a virgin birth for, the, for Jesus. It's a story really behind the story. There is no birth, there is no death for any of us. Yes, as bodies we were born and as bodies we seem to transition and pass away. But those are false idols and not anything like what God's created. So we want to awaken from the figure in the dream that we are dreaming as sleeping giants, sleeping uh, Christ figures. And when we awaken, we recognize that there is no birth, there is no death, there is no sickness. Why? Because God didn't create any. Nothing unreal that God did not create exists. It can be a figment of our imagination in the ego sense. But that doesn't make it true. I know it's frightening to let go of our seeming identity as an ego body. But then fear itself is not true, is unreal, and doesn't exist. We're only afraid because we're holding on to an ideation of an illusion, a false idol, as it says here. And we will no longer worship what is false. We will no longer worship the golden calf 
based on fear that our teacher has not come back from a meeting with God on Mount Sinai. He's always in our midst. Jesus, Moses, our exodus from slavery is complete. We needn't fear awakening to the true self. When we recognize that we're holding on to a false image that has always been fraught with challenges such as sickness, separation thoughts, isolation, scarcity, loss, illness, death. These are all figments of an ego dream. God would never create that as the truth. So our fear is ill-placed and the fear itself is false. But we're only holding on to what we think is uh, all we've got. And we want to keep it going for as long as we can, even though it's filled with suffering, filled with disillusionment, filled with frustration. Holding on to that and being afraid, that kind of attachment, that kind of desire to be what we are really not created as is a very difficult journey, a very unhappy dream. But when we awaken from the unhappy dream to the real world, which is filled with love and forgiveness. And we are magnanimous in giving because we know that to give and to receive are the same in truth. Then there's no fear. Our trust is restored in the real world. Our trust in the Christ identity. Our trust in the source of the Christ identity, God. All of this is within us. And all of this, of course, unfolds and evolves as we practice forgiveness. Because we're for forgiving that which is untrue, has never happened. Difficult, challenging circumstances and people and events, none of that has any power over our true identity. So when we awaken through forgiveness of that which has no power over us, that which is unreal, and doesn't exist, sets us free. And we're in the real world of perfect love, which casts out all fear. And this is our journey. This is the process. Keep forgiving recognizing that God is our source, recognizing that we are still as God created us, not as our ego minds have imagined. So it says in this one thought, we are as God created us, not as we've imagined ourselves. In this one thought is all the past undone. The present saved to quietly extend into a timeless future. If you are as God created you, then there has been no separation of your mind from His, no split between your mind and other minds, and only unity within your own. I am as God created me. His son can suffer nothing. And I am his son. Well, that sums up everything we've been discussing. All the past is undone. It's just a memory of a dream. 
And you know how dreams are. You wake up, and for the life of you, you can't remember much of the dream. Why? Because intrinsically it's false. It's unreal. It doesn't exist. It was a dream. Now, as the dreamer of the dream, I do awaken to my identity as the dreamer. Not the figures in the dream, including myself. I seem to be in that dream and others were interacting with me as separate beings. But the truth is that I was dreaming the dream. As the Christ, I awaken. Jesus is the example of the awakened self. And I, like Jesus, can awaken. And then the dream goes back to nothingness. The nothingness that it came from. And I'm then as God created me in my mind and in my soul and in my idea in my mind of the truth of reality. No fear, no guilt, no separation. Only the Christ loving us in the real world. And then God takes us the final step home. Metaphorically reaches down and grasps our hand and takes us back into the vastness and the infinity of heaven itself, which we've never really left. That too was a dream that we left heaven. So there was a dream within a dream. I dreamt that uh, I fell asleep and left heaven. For a variation on that dream, I was expelled from heaven. And then in that dream of the dream, I have a life as Jerry Yaakov. I have a ministry, I'm a teacher, I'm a husband, a father, a son. I've had many incarnations in the successive uh, dreams. All of them, of course, were simply dreams and untrue. But the dreamer, Christ, that God extended from his own mind and still remains in God's mind, the dreamer remains intact. And I look to Jesus as my teacher who awakened not to his identity as a son of a carpenter, not to his identity as a teacher in a world of other teachers of God and of pain and suffering, but awakening as the Christ. We have that potential to do as he did and more. He doesn't specify what the more is, because at the level of our state of awakeness, our consciousness, we wouldn't understand. But the potential exists to do so much more. And in the meantime, we can have happy dreams because we haven't fully awakened. And happy dreams are forgiving dreams. I recognize that everything that occurs in the dream and here I'm a lucid dreamer, so I recognize, gee, this is a dream. This isn't true. This has no real power or influence over who I am as the creation of God. There is no death. The Son of God is free. There is no birth. There is only creation. Creation, I mean, excuse me, birth is of bodies. And I'm not a body, I am free. I'm still as God created me. I am his son eternally. And as his son, I can suffer nothing. And I am his son. Well, let's read on a little bit here. This holy instant what I give to you. Be you God in charge. For I would follow you, certain 
that your direction gives me peace. You as God, you as the Holy Spirit, you as Jesus, you as my true identity. Salvation and atonement have awakened my mind. Redemption has occurred through forgiveness. Forgiveness of the untruths. Forgiveness of that which never existed. It was simply an imagined dream by my false ego self. Let's transcend the ego. We can do it with God's and the Holy Spirit's help. Help, help, excuse me. With uh, the Holy Spirit's help and our willingness. That's the equation that works. My willingness plus God's uh, omniscience and omnipotence, and I awaken. It's pretty wonderful. And if I need a word to help me, he will give it to me. If I need a thought, that will he also give. And if I need but stillness and a tranquil, open mind, these are the gifts I will receive of them. He is in charge by my request. And he will hear and answer me. Because he speaks for God, my Father, and his Holy Son. So these are references of the He, which is a capital H, to the Holy Spirit, or to Jesus. And I look to my teacher in trust, knowing that all my fondest desires, not of the ego, but of the Spirit, are given unto me, and are given unto me eternally. So I am as God created me, and I want to awaken. I want the dream to be over. But in the meantime, I accept a happy dream, one in which I'm no longer afraid, because I no longer believe that I'm a body that sinned, and that is guilty and deserves punishment. All that I walk through that dream of guilt and sin and fear and punishment and of sickness and of death. I walk through it with a lucid mind, a mind that is seeking willingly to forgive with the power of the Holy Spirit. And that is the nature. That is the journey that the Course of Miracles presents to us. Would you care to join on the journey? Read A Course in Miracles, read this book, choose once again, keep watching our videos, uh, go on the internet, and check out Ken Wapnick, Dr. Wapnick and his videos on YouTube, his books, Ken Wapnick is my teacher as well. You know who else is my teacher? You and everyone else that I meet. It becomes a holy encounter. Everything that I learn, I learn through recognizing the Christ in you. That is the holy instant which I would give to God in recognition of my willingness to awaken. And I say to the Holy Spirit, be you in charge. I would follow you, certain that your direction gives me peace. So I'm speaking to myself, the true self. But as long as I am asleep in that process of awakening, I need one the Holy Spirit and Jesus, who don't uh, believe in the dream as reality. I may still believe in parts of the dream and feel affected by it. 
So I need to turn to one who is not asleep. Turn to one who does not believe in the dream or any of its content in the form that I perceive. And it says here, if I need a word to help me, the Holy Spirit gives it to me. If I need a thought, that, that he will give me as well. And if I need but stillness and a tranquil open mind, these are gifts I will receive of the Holy Spirit of Jesus. He is in charge by my request, my willingness, my trust. And he will hear and answer me because he speaks for God, my Father, and his Holy Son, Jesus, and me, and you. All is one in what's known as the Christ Sonship, filled with light, filled with love, filled with equanimity. That's who we are, like a wave on an ocean, always returning to its source, like sunbeams from the sun, indecipherable from the source, the sun itself. This is the truth. It sets me free. I'm so grateful and thankful. And I'm so grateful that you've joined us today. Again, we've been reading from Choose Once Again. And it's written, <coughs> excuse me, edited by um, Bill Thetford. T-H-E-T-F-O-R-D. Bill Thetford uh, from Selections from the Course in Miracles. If you have any questions or would like to get in contact with me, uh, please contact me. The uh, email and the phone number will be on the uh, graphics at the end of this video. But until then, I would like to say I love you. I thank you. I recognize you. Namaste. You and I are one in Christ and in God itself. That is the truth, and it sets us free and it awakens us. And thank you to the NECAT Network for putting down these videos. Thank you for those of you who are watching. Thank you to my beloved wife, Candace Adelson. She edits these videos, as well as is my soulmate and partner in a holy relationship. And so it is. I'm grateful and thankful for this holy instant. Shoes once again in the Course in Miracles. Amen. See you next time.